what's up i'm troubleshoot welcome back to another video in this one i'll be showing you how to optimize sons of the forest for the best performance and experience i won't be touching on windows instead in the description down below you'll find a windows 10 11 and nvidia optimization guides as well as anything else that may help you get better fps close anything you don't need open and fire up sons of the forest before we even hop into a game i'll head to options and we'll start on the display tab here resolution should match your display or at least be compatible that way you're not pushing too many pixels and not seeing them and if it's incompatible it may be blurry to begin with the full screen mode should absolutely be set to exclusive full screen or full screen for the best possible performance vsync should be disabled max fps is set to max here gamma and brightness are your preference now if you find that while you're playing the game things like obs are struggling and you're getting maybe 70 fps come back to the slider here and set your max fps just below say 70 to around 60 or 65 to give your graphics card some breathing room obs and other programs as well that only really matters if you're recording and need extra power otherwise just leave it on max and apply on the graphics tab at the very top everything is pretty well optimized to begin with they're in a really good space quality preset obviously adjusts everything i'd recommend changing it to medium and working your way up otherwise on lower end graphics cards work your way down from medium draw distance depends Depends on how much VRAM you have in your PC. The higher that this is, the more things will be loaded on screen at once. Being a forest, you usually won't see too far, so having this at medium is probably good enough. Unless you find that things are unloading at weird distances, you can raise this up later, but you don't need it too high. Ambient occlusion has a small impact on visuals and a medium impact on performance. You can push this to low and not really notice too much of a change. Fog quality, fog quality, we can push between between off, low, and high. Obviously, if you don't like fog, set this to off, otherwise leave it on low. High is just unnecessary. Anisotropic textures is anisotropic filtering and should have barely any effect on FPS in gameplay, but it may have an impact when you're loading textures, etc. If you have a relatively new graphics card, you can set this to on and have better quality textures for practically no cost. Shadow quality, as this is more of a cinematic experience, you may want better quality shadows, but if you find that your FPS is tanking pretty much everywhere, shadows is probably the cause of it. Crank this to low or even ultra low and you'll notice a huge increase in fps especially when there's lots of things casting shadow in the scene if you find jagged shadows a bit distracting set it to low instead of ultra low giving you better shadow quality with a minor performance impact otherwise leave it on very low for the best performance low is probably good enough for medium and maybe higher end graphics cards clouds obviously they're going to be out of your way most of the time you can comfortably set this to low and forget about it grass you're not going to be staring at grass the whole time though there will be lots of grass around you set this to low for better performance otherwise if you like a more dense ground you can set this to medium and forget about it i'll personally be leaving this on low water Usually you'll be running around tons of water and having this higher up could cause you to lose quite a few FPS. And if you find that you're struggling with FPS, this is definitely something you should drop to low. It'll change how much you can see through it, but it's definitely a very good trade-off if you're struggling with FPS, especially around water. It won't have too much of an impact on general gameplay. Parallax distance should have very little impact on gameplay. I'll leave this on medium. Build board quality, not entirely too sure what this is. I assume it's for billboards. Medium is good enough. If you find that you're running low on VRAM, you can drop this down to low. I'll leave it on medium. Texture resolution, this completely has to do with how much VRAM you have in your PC. We have full half, quarter, eighth, and that's it. If you have, say, two or three gigs of VRAM, set this to eighth, which is the lowest option. Maybe four to five or six gigs of VRAM, set this to quarter. At around eight gigabytes of VRAM, set this to half. And if you have anything more than eight gigs of VRAM, you can raise this up to full. Usually, raising your texture resolution won't cost you any FPS unless you're already maxing out your VRAM, meaning that it's having to swap out textures as you go. Too low won't help you gain many FPS, but having it higher usually won't cost you anything and will greatly improve your experience at practically no cost, assuming you don't go over budget. 
Scrolling down to Features for Dynamic Resolution here. If this is set to anything other than off, anti-aliasing will be turned off, and I'd highly recommend you use Dynamic Resolution instead of anti-aliasing. We have TAAU, which I assume is the game's built-in upscaler. We have FSR 1.0, which isn't too good, and DLSS. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, absolutely set this to DLSS and leave your DLSS at quality. If you need a boost in performance, you can crank this to balance later on, but anything lower than that will usually lead to weird graphics artifacts. Having this on FSR 1.0 may usually leave your screen a bit blurry as FSR 1 isn't as good as FSR 2, but it is graphics card agnostic. It'll give you a similar experience and FPS gain to DLSS and a similar quality, though not as good, but you can improve that by using the slider over here to change the resolution target. Having this at 100 will render your game at exactly 100% of the resolution that it should be. This means there's practically nothing happening here. Having this at anything higher means that you're rendering the game at a higher resolution and pushing it down, giving you a much sharper and higher quality experience, but at the cost of rendering the game at a bigger size, costing you tons of FPS. Dropping this down to probably 80 would be about the quality preset for DLSS, 70 being maybe the balanced, 50 being performance, and anything lower than this, say about 30%, would be ultra performance for DLSS. This is much more customizable than DLSS, though a bit more confusing. You may notice that pushing this too low makes your game really blurry. And finally, TAAU, I'm not entirely sure how good this will perform. Obviously, you'll need to test this out on your PC to find out what works best for you. NVIDIA, just stick to DLSS, quality or balanced. Bloom should have minor effect on performance. It's what happens when you stare at a bright light source. You'll find that your entire screen is flashed with light. That is Bloom. If you don't like that effect, you can turn it off. You won't gain any FPS per se, but it may improve your visibility if you find yourself distracted and annoyed by Bloom. Screen space reflections. This isn't RTX. This is instead an ancient technology that's optimized really well and should have almost no performance impact having this on. It'll give you relatively good reflections and water, mirrors, etc at practically no performance cost. I'd recommend leaving this on for a better experience, otherwise if you're clawing for every last bit of FPS, set this to off. Motion blur is mostly your preference. If you like a more cinematic experience, you can leave this on, but if you struggle with motion sickness, turn this off. I personally don't really like motion blur, so I'll set it off. Micro shadowing and contact shadows both have to do with how shadows land on different objects and how they affect them. Micro shadowing, I assume, is calculating more accurate shadows for small objects instead of just adding a blurry shadow under them. I assume this would have an FPS impact of quite a bit, especially if there's lots of detailed objects in the scene. You should turn this off. Contact shadows has a huge impact on how trees far away from you look. I'd absolutely recommend leaving this on. It'll give you a much better looking game. I'll have it turned off just to start with so you can see the FPS difference, which should be minimal, and the huge quality difference difference, which you'll notice dramatically. Finally, chromatic aberration. This is this sort of effect up here, where the red and blue separates on your screen. Usually this happens around the edges of your monitor, especially when you're taking damage, etc. This is something you can turn off here if you don't like how it looks. I'll personally leave it on. Then finally, style at the very bottom. Similar to the last game, we can enable and disable film grain here. If you're recording and find that your recordings are huge in size, film grain is usually something that has to do with that, as adding film grain causes the encoder to work a lot harder to keep the same quality. You can turn this off or on based on your gameplay experience, and should you be recording, having this on may result in better quality recordings, or worse, depending on how much bitrate you give your recording. Finally, color grading is entirely your preference and should have almost no effect on how the game performs. I'd recommend clicking through these options while you're in-game to see what you like. Personally, I remember there's one of these that I liked from the original Forest game that made the game a bit more saturated and colorful. For now, I'll apply these changes. On the Gameplay tab, there's not really much we'd want to change here other than maybe Field of View. Now, while Field of View can technically affect your performance, you really shouldn't be worrying about this. Set this to what you prefer and game with that. It really doesn't matter what FPS you're getting, especially in a more cinematic game like Sons of the Forest. The rest of these here are your preference. Big Head Mode, I'm pretty sure, is just a comedic add-on. 
that would usually be considered an Easter egg. Controls, this is once again entirely your preference. In here, you can control your controller options, button assignments, etc. It seems that some of these are unbound, such as reset and utility. You may want to come back and find these later. If you find yourself looking for what keys they are, these may be different for you. And finally, audio. In here, we have different audio profiles, as in default, small speakers, nighttime, and that seems to be about it. Default, I assume, has the highest dynamic range, which means that loud sounds and soft sounds will have a huge difference in volume. If you find yourself sensitive to, say, loud jump scares and things like that, this is something you'll want to push further to the right, so loud sounds and soft sounds have barely any difference between them. Otherwise, play with small speakers or default if you'd want the full dynamic range experience. Voice count is how many sounds play at once. If you find yourself on a really CPU bottlenecked system, you may want to lower this from 128 to, say, 64 or 32 if too many sounds playing at once is causing your game to really drop FPS, especially when there's lots going on. Do remember to come back here if necessary. Personally, I'll leave this on 128. My PC should be more than happy handling a ton of different audio sounds, audio sources, etc. Finally, master, SFX, and music volume. Music volume is something I usually lower, but this is your preference entirely. Anyways, going through all of the options here, there's nothing left except to hop into the game. Okay, so I'm hopping into the game here. I'm not going to spoil too much. The sensitivity is a bit high for my liking, but you can see I'm sitting around 70-ish FPS, which isn't terrible. I'm running a 3080 Ti on a really powerful PC otherwise, but I am playing at 2K. So obviously this isn't super duper optimized, but it is running really well. There's no hitching, there's no stuttering, things are looking good. All right, well, this is the optimized settings. What about the default settings? Options, graphics, if I set fog to off, you can see there's a huge increase in visibility, but looking off in the distance, things start to drop off in quality really quickly. Now, looking off in the distance, things look pretty good. If I crank the view distance from medium to ultra, for example, you'll see practically no difference. Now, I would assume this mainly has to do with certain kinds of objects and especially buildings. So if you're on a multiplayer server that's pretty populated, having the draw distance on higher may cost you more FPS. It's really down to the server that you're playing on. Things are probably really good for you on no matter what kind of PC you're on. If you find the trees in the distance a bit off-putting, as I do currently, head into your options, graphics, scroll down to the bottom, and turn on contact shadows here. By turning these on, you'll notice a huge improvement in shadows in the distance, and truthfully, this makes the game look a ton better. Obviously, it'll cost you a handful of FPS, but it's definitely worth it for the overall improvement in gameplay experience. I haven't found too much of a difference with micro shadowing here, so take from that as you will. Things are looking pretty good as is. Just for the fun of it, I'll crank my options from custom to ultra instead, and we'll see what kind of change it makes. A huge impact. My FPS dropped to about 60-ish, still doing really well, but obviously that's because I'm running a super high-end PC. If I look around quickly, I notice a bit of FPS hitching, but it's really not terrible at all. Once again, the only real thing I would disable here is fog, as personally there's just a bit too much of this, but once again that's your preference. Disabling it, seeing things in the distance improves spectacularly, but ultimately there's not too much of a difference between the optimized low settings and the ultra quality settings here, which is exactly what we were hoping for. We kept most of the quality of the game while improving a ton on FPS on lower end systems. So anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.